We open with Tomasa Ciampa versus Kushida. Now here's a match that doesn't need a story. Kushida's on a winning streak. Ciampa's been a top guy for a long time. It tells they're both really great wrestlers. It should be a fun match to watch anyway. You just throw them out there on TV, and it's fine. You don't you don't need a backstory for everything. But no. We are told, and I want to emphasize the word told, not shown. We are told that this match is happening because they got in a fight backstage. Why? Just do the match. You could just do Ciampa versus Kushida for no reason. It would be just fine. So they do a match. You know what's funny about that, Vinny? There is an NXT preview that goes out on Wednesday afternoon. And the NXT preview just announced this match. But then they had to tell us that they did a brawl after the match yes. had already been announced. And actually what they claimed in the preview was that the show would open with Ember Moon doing a promo. Oh. And literally the show opens and the announcers say, Ember Moon will do her promo after this match. I see. It's like, is this that hard? She should have done it, it after the show. It came out this afternoon. So, regardless, the match happened, and regardless, it was, of course, very good. Both guys working their ass off, and they're just, it was a mean guy match if ever I've seen one. And Ciampa's well aware, because she has been on a roll lately, and when he uh, grabs your hands and has you in the mat and he stomps your head, either the back of the head or the front of your head, it's bad time. So he's fighting like crazy to avoid these stomps, and at one point, uh, Kushida's got him down, and he's about to do the stomps, but Ciampa fights back with up kicks, effectively beating him to the to the kick, if you will. Somewhere in here, Ciampa got a two-fall of a duplex, and that is what Vic Joseph called it, so Granny would, Granny would be proud. Eventually, Kushida scores with a baseball punch, Ciampa's down, unless he's invulnerable to the big stomps, and because she's just stomping on his head, and he goes to crank in the hoverboard lock, and there was, I, I, I guess some, well, there was some drama about whether Ciampa would submit. There was no doubt in my mind this was the time for Kushida to win, but no. The Velveteen Dream, who, th this feud was over. <laughs> this, this dream Kushida conflict had been ended to everyone's satisfaction. There's no need to further the story, but no. The Dream comes out, tries to attack, hits Ciampa on accident. Kushida beats up Dream again and chases him away. I don't know why they did this. I don't know what the point was. I don't know why. Listen, I know Ciampa's tell you a top why. guy. Okay. They, didn't, they signed a match, and they didn't want to beat anybody. <laughs> That's what well, happened here. I realize that. But. Well, I mean, dude, fuck. What in the fuck's going on? I mentioned this today on Observer Live. I don't like to repeat my shit, but fuck. You, re you recap it again, and I get even more angry. I watched this show after AEW. I watched this show after a show that never does DQs, and they never do countouts, and they never do bullshit finishes. And what they do is they never book a match where they don't want somebody to lose. The guy putting the, the show together, the main guy in charge, the Vince McMahon of the promotion, granted... Jericho and, you know, all these other guys, I mean, they all have a say in their programs. Some of them have more say than others. But the point is, like, there's a lot of a lot of cooks in the kitchen. But at the end of the day, Tony Schiavone or Tony, Tony Khan. Khan. Tony Schiavone may be booking two for all I know. Tony Khan is the guy in charge. He's been doing this for one fucking year. The one-year anniversary is next month. He has no experience in wrestling whatsoever. And he manages to do a wrestling show where we never have DQs and we never have countouts. And you know what? Things seem to be going along just fine. He figured out before he even fucking began, if I don't want to beat either man, don't make the match. And here I am watching this fucking match and I'm enjoying it and I'm into it. And this fucking dude runs in for the DQ. A waste of my fucking time. And on top of that, you saw what happened in the match on Sunday. You talked about it. But you know what you didn't mm -hmm. talk about, Vinny? How that feud began. The feud began because Kushida beat the ever-loving shit out of the Velveteen Dream in an angle. That's true. To the point where I thought that Velveteen was being written off TV again. <laughs> yes. This leads to a match where Velveteen loses, and Kushida beats the shit out of him to the point where I think he's being written off television or he's going to vanish for a while, or he's being drafted to Raw or SmackDown, and it leads three days later 
to him just coming back and running in in the middle of this match. Why should I care about these angles and these beatings and these storylines if they don't mean shit? And the results don't mean shit. At least when Brody killed Cody, he was gone for a fucking month. And then he came back. Velveteen didn't miss one fucking show. So yes, the match was good, but this was a load of shit.